this is a Birmingham based podcast. Mm-hmm. I really want to touch on Alabama. But how did you even get? I mean, you just you just said you had to branch out to other places to start writing more loans and, and doing more business. Why Birmingham and how how did you get to Birmingham? I would think that you would want to go to hotter markets, maybe than or or tell us about Birmingham. Is Birmingham a hot market? It is actually one of the greatest cash flowing markets we see out there. That's the wow. reports I'm getting back from the people I work with. Mm-hmm. And the people I'm working with, of course, is the end user, the real estate investor. Right, right. How I got to the Birmingham market was it was a demand from the real estate investor. They're going into each market that makes sense. They're not just going out there and buying houses indiscriminately. There's a lot of research that goes into this. They're working with individuals in various markets that helps them understand what can be accomplished there. And Birmingham, through some research and local people here that understood the market, helped people that were coming from other markets, such as like California. They're coming from the the Northwest, people coming from from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. They start finding that these markets made sense. When Mm -hmm. you think about where they're coming from, the cost to acquire real estate there definitely does not – justify what you're going to get in the form of a return. You come into a place like Alabama, it makes sense. Um, so Alabama mirrors a lot of other markets as far as the ability to acquire but and get the cash flow because it's mainly a wage-based economy from mm-hmm. what I can tell. So because of that, you get to a point where it, you know, they started determining that this was one of the markets to come to. So I just followed them. It wasn't me purposely finding right. Alabama. Right, right. I was asked to come to Alabama. Right. It was the people buying the real estate says, we need you to get a license in Alabama. So I got a license in Alabama. It just made sense. So it kind of begs the question for the people that just don't, don't know the business, and you know, my, myself included, why wouldn't someone from Alabama – well, I guess you're working with people more on a national stage. Mm-hmm. But say an investor from Alabama that lives in Alabama that's purchasing real estate in Alabama as cash flow real estate, why would they go to a guy who's writing loans in Arizona? It's a solid question. I've actually had that a lot. And say, how is it you're out here and you live right, thousands right. of miles away? Well, it's because in our environment, the real estate lender, if mm-hmm. you will, most of the time it's a very transactional relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you a loan. You're going to close. We're going to you know, end right. the relationship. If you need me later on, just call me. Right. Well, it, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of strategy to build a business around helping people build their business. Right, so how I how I uh, deal with the real estate investor is, um, and we've talked about this in the past. We look at them as kind of like the CEO of their real estate investment firm. Right, right, and so since they're building a business around that, and they're their own decision maker. But a CFO can't sit at every chair at the board table. Mm-hmm. They need to have a chief operations officer. Mm-hmm. They need to have a chief financial officer. They have to have people that handle the legal piece of it. All these pieces. And they can't do it all. Because those real estate investors, the way they became real estate investors is they had to make the income and, the, and build the, um, the assets to invest in that somewhere. So they had to have a job somewhere to build that up. So we always tell people, stick with what you know. Stick with what got you there right. and let other people do it for you. So now as the CEO, they... Pick your chief financial, your chief operations officer, which I'd argue in many cases is Mr. Brian Tripp, and who is uh, operating that business for them because of what your knowledge is. Oh, and so you're like their regional operations manager in Alabama. Then when they're looking for somebody to help on the finance piece, that's where I'm a little bit different. That's why I'm making it into 23 states. That's why I carry 23 licenses because these people are like, hmm, I can talk to all these other lenders, but they don't understand what I'm trying to do. Right. It's a very transactional relationship where what I structure for them is let me help you build your business. Let me take your financial profile. Let me take your fi- your income and your assets and let's, let's stack that in a way to make you successful in the acquisition of real estate. Then I'm going to purposely hang my licenses with a firm that understands that, that knows how to generate, how to, to use the lending capability they have to make it advantageous for the investor to continue to acquire property instead of hindering them. We're going to assist them. And so because of that, we're able to generate business. And you know, my business is really building business. I generate revenue by closing loans. Now, individuals can go anywhere to get the loans. I understand that. If you've right. got a local relationship, give it a shot. Right. But I, you know, I argue many times just because of what comes back that the individuals you're working with on a local basis or really many in a national basis, they don't understand the real estate investor. It's a very complicated process. And it's much easier just to, hey, somebody wants to buy a house, do the loan and walk away. We are there for the long term. Right. We are not going anywhere. In fact, you're stuck with us once you start working with us because we need to help you drive that and we are driven by that so we don't go away real easy. Yeah. 